afternoon guys it is the 23rd of january and i am here with you to do my antique papery design team project for january so yay it's going to be a fairly simple one um and also you're getting a little bonus tutorial because i'm going to show you how to use the envelope punch board because today we are just going to make envelopes um, this is cardstock. This is not this in my hand right now is cardstock from a 12 by 12 paper pad um, It's that antique papery. It's like I said just cardstock um, But this is what I'm doing. I'm making an envelope this big Which when it's done it is 8 inches wide by Just shy of 6 inches width so there we go that's what we're going to do now unless you guys sorry let me tilt the camera um unless you guys actually have an a3 printer you're not going to be able to use antique papery papers to do this project to make an envelope this big anyway you'd need to do a smaller one we're lucky in the fact that we now have an A3 printer. So I've managed to print out some designs that Sherry sent us that were, were, were no, they weren't, um, that are actually 12 by 12 inch images printed out onto A3 paper. It's actually shrunk them down to 11 inch by 11 and a quarter inch, actually, when cut out but yes so unfortunately guys if you don't have an a3 printer and you're using antique papery designs they're not going to turn out this big they're obviously only going to turn out a4 but yeah but yes so i thought well as soon as I, i've got these beautiful 12 by 12 designs i'm going to make use of them because when you shrink them down to fit on an a4 sheet they either come out as like i think they're I think they turn out at about eight and a half or eight by eight, something like that on an A4 sheet. Um, but if you um, hit the button to print to scale or print to page, it scales it up that much. You, you lose a lot of the pattern. So, and I also need to use up a, a ton of this shiny, glossy photo paper that we have. We have oodles and oodles of A3. Um, glossy photo paper it is canon paper and unfortunately we've had it this long we've had it years years and years because years ago my my, my, man, my husband um, decided he was going to get an A3 printer but the one we were looking at was like an office style printer so it were a big chunky thing that were a printer photocopy a scanner blah de blah um, the sale actually fell through but before the sale fell through we bagged a load of really good good quality obviously because it's canon photo paper at a cheap price and yeah it's great don't get me wrong it's perfect but it's inkjet paper uh, no sorry it's laser jet paper and we have an inkjet printer so it won't print on it the ink will not dry on it there's obviously some cut some type of a special coating on this i've tried Look, I've tried printing on it in loads of different formats, photo formats and everything, and it will not take it. The ink will just not stay on it. It just wipes off, com just completely wipes off. So what I did was, I thought, well, I'm not letting all this paper go to waste. I stuck it in the printer, shiny side up, because our printer goes in that way and comes over to print. So I printed on the reverse side, because the reverse side of it is matte. And it's just like, thin cardstock so <laughs> yay but yeah and the image is still printed out beautifully so i have like i said i had a ton of this paper to use up as you can see this is how it prints on my a3 paper um so i've also got some cutting to do as well i will spare you that so i will get that done now and then i will pop back
Okay, guys, so we're back. And <laughs> we have all this. Don't worry, this isn't going to go to waste. None of this will go to waste. I still have a use for it. Um, but that's not for this video. So, I'll put that to one side. <clears throat> I'm not going to put the cutting board away just yet because some of these papers, well all of these papers, are actually still too big. Because, like I've said, my printer does not print these exactly 11 by 11. It prints them 11 by 11 and a quarter. So, they need cutting down still. Or at least I need 11 by 11 sheets of paper to go to do the envelopes that I want. So, I'm now I'm going to take this out and I'm going to cut each one of these down to be 11 by 11 inch. So, that hangs over, so that's obviously the side that I need. Again, these might only be tiny little strips left over, but they will get used later. Not in this project, in a later project. Um, and that's already 11, because that's how it prints on one side, but the other side is too big. So, I will get on with that. And again, <laughs> I won't put you through watching, so I will speed it up luckily i've managed to get all my papers the right way up so i know i can just pick them up and stick it straight on and slice so that makes the process a bit quicker than having to turn them around so i will be back in uh, well a few minutes to me but a second to you guys way through that video you would have seen me turn one of these page that one turn that page around because I was looking at the pattern but it doesn't actually matter not for this project because well for me anyway it doesn't because um, I kind of went through and chose patterns that didn't really matter which way up they go because that's something you need to take into account when making an envelope as well because some of your design if it goes upside well if it's one way some of it will be upside down but anyway so here we go like i said there is a lovely bunch of images absolutely beautiful I and mean, you've just seen them as i've been cutting them and as i said a bit of a collage store sort of i've st stuck to the images that look as though they've been collaged and could go any way up yes okay some of them like this no not that one um oh gosh where did i just see it that one <laughs> some of them like this one because there's a map in the background are kind of in one way but i will sort that when i come to it and that one because it's got text on it but I'm not, I'm not really worried, to be honest. Right, so I now have all my papers cut to 11 inch by 11 inch, okay? This doesn't matter because that's the card size. The card size is what's going to be going on the inside. I'm not bothered about that. What I need is this middle one the paper size what i need to be following is the paper size sorry we'll go back through that the card size is how big the envelope will be once you've scored it and cut it and everything 
this is how big your paper needs to be for you to get it that big which like we measured is how big this is at the beginning we measured this so it is six no eight that way by six that way i think yep eight by six okay so if you already have a card that you think oh i need an envelope for that then these measurements and whatever you do come in useful but we don't or i don't at this precise moment in time i just want to make an envelope out of some 11 inch by 11 inch papers so i find 11 inch by 11 inch and then i find i have to line up at four and seven eighths of an inch which then i come up here and on this board at the top it's a bit hard to focus ah, there we go a bit hard to get it to focus because it's in gold i now have to line my paper up with four seven inch seven eighths mark okay so that little groove there is where i need to put my paper just this once this is where a lot of people get confused with this punch board and i did hands up i did the same when i first got it just this once you line your paper up with the four and seven eighths inch sorry let's just get you try and zoom it in a little bit the four and seven eighths inch mark i think i don't think it's going to focus properly because well you're too close okay so we line it up there and then where am i this button we punch before you do that it helps if you get underneath your board and take out the plastic bone folder that comes with it <laughs> then without moving this paper right we've lined up there we've lined up there we've punched it there in here there's a groove there so now line that back up punched it we need to find that groove and score i'm going to zoom you back out now make sure it's flush across the top get in there and score down that groove now it's not going to go all the way to the edge of my paper because my paper overhangs the board but that doesn't really matter just get it as far down as you can and i'm actually not going to use this i am going to use my oh if i can get it out nope, probably not be back in a second guys because it's well and truly stuck in there found it well i knew where it were i just got it it had fallen instead of being stood up that way it had fallen down flat so i have this it's a nail art tool so when you're doing your nails you can use this end to pick the little bits of um i'm gonna say glitter but they're not um gems and stuff up and then um, put them on your nails but a lot of people use them for scoring and i bought this one as an actual scoring tool and then i realized what it were i thought oh, do you know i've got a bag full of them upstairs but anyway yes yeah, so let's get back to this so we line up there at four and seven eighths move off the paper make some room so I'll line up at four and seven eighths we've punched we're going to move that to one side and we're going to score that's better down that groove not too hard you'll go through the paper then this forget about it absolutely forget about it it's absolutely irrelevant now which a lot of people like myself make the mistake of going right i've done that so now i need to line that up the punch and score no you don't no you absolutely don't because if you do you can only see it very faintly there's your score line if you line it back up there line it up properly look how far out that is from there your score lines are not going to be in the right place 
what you now have to do is line that score line up with this as best you can because granted mine didn't go right to the edge of the page but I still know roughly where it is then so ignore this now we're working off this then you punch and score again again in that little groove now that one does go right to the end because it's shorter side there you go take it out turn do not line up with the because again actually you're on you're on track if you do it there but ignore that and use this line this up with that groove so you can see it better now because that's the shorter side Make sure that is lined up. Ignore these numbers. Punch. And score. Like I said, don't go too hard with your scoring tool. Whichever tool you're using. This one or that one. Because you will punch through some, some of your papers. You will actually rip them. And again, turn. Ignore these numbers. Line that up with that. So you, it won't work on this line. So again, can you see the groove there? Yep. Line it up with this as best you can. I'm sorry, I'm probably going to get my head in the way. Maybe not, but I have to do this because there we go. It's hard to see. And then score down that edge. Don't forget to punch. <laughs> and there you have your envelope shape. Yes, we are zoomed out. It's just not enough space to work with a 12 by, well, 11 by 11 sheet. Okay, and now we turn it over and we fold back on itself. I've probably not done that right. I can't remember. Um, <laughs> I can't remember the rule. The rule is, um, what is it? mountains into no valleys into mountains and mountains into valleys or something but i'm sorry guys i can never remember which way that goes so and there you have your envelope shape so obviously you don't want to put it well you might want to put it that way but because of the envelope you push them two flaps in and that one up that one down it all line well doesn't line up on the edge but yeah and there you have a pretty envelope and this is what I was saying about it not mattering which way up it goes if once folded you find your design is should be that way up or you prefer it that way up then you simply open it back up and fold the other way so now it's the right way it, but this is why I chose papers where it doesn't really matter. So I will work on this one and then I will actually go back to speeding the video up. So we now have our envelope shape. Again, should be, I think it's eight across. Yes, eight inches across by six inches tall. Oh, it's actually six and a half. Okay. Oh, is that right? Is that right? No, it should be six by eight. I have no idea. Whatever. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, six by eight. That's how big your envelope is. Uh, well, eight by six and a half because you need an eight inch wide by six inch. In, whatever. Whatever, whatever. I don't know, but it'll do. <laughs> so it worked out bigger than that, actually. But anyway, whatever, it still worked out. Me and maths don't work, so don't go well together. Now you can glue down them sides and then just tuck a little bit under there. But I personally don't like the way that pops up to a point. Oh, something else, something else. I always forget this bit, something else. On the other side to this punch board, 
there's a coin around her. It says reverse punch, okay? And what you do is, it is what it is, it's a coin around her. So you put your corners in and it gives them that lovely rounded shape for you. Actually, I didn't need to do that. I'm going to cut it off and you don't need to do them because you're going to glue on them. You can do, but you don't need to. I always forget this bit until I come to glue it together and then I'm like, ah, didn't do it again. So, which way did we go? Let's do it that way because that's a bit prettier, the flowers going up on that, se that side. So, let's do it that way. Not really fussed about that. But yeah, so there you go guys, pretty much. Um, but like I said, I still don't like, and I didn't need to do that, I still don't like that bit. So, what I do is, I just take a ruler of any kind, and then where that corner is and that corner is there, line it up and then just move up a fraction, just a little bit, get hold of it, fold it, and then cut. Just as simple as that, before you glue. And then just cut it off. Then when you come to glue, it's not straight. <laughs> Nowhere near straight, really. That's better. And then just maybe round the corners yourself a little bit. If you're good at doing that sort of thing, which I am not. But it'll do. And there you go. And then the scissors seriously need cleaning. There you go. Now I like that finish better than a pointy finish. Okay. And then you just glue. And you can use any glue, and I'm not in a rush for this to dry, so let's use this tacky glue. This is Anita's tacky glue, PVA tacky glue, I got this online. Um, oh, do not do that. <laughs> do not do that, guys. Do not shake the bottle while there's no lid on it, or while you put your finger over the top of it. Luckily, it's not coming out yet, so phew. But yeah, don't, I wouldn't advise you do that. Um, this needs a pin poking in it because it's dried up. But <laughs> don't do that either. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Yep. This is me. <laughs> Oh my gosh, you know what that reminded me of? <laughs> well, you probably won't actually, unless any of you watching this are, Patre uh, are on Gail's Patreon account. <laughs> she did exactly the same last night. Oh, do you mean well on the video that I was watching from her last night? Luckily, this is like plastic coated. It's got like a plastic coating on, so that has just wiped off brilliantly. But oh my gosh, um, yeah, she did the same. She shook a paint bottle that her grandbabies had been playing with and obviously hadn't put the top back on and she didn't check and did that and that splatted everywhere. <laughs> Whoopsie. Right, so now I know it's working. Oh my goodness. A little too well. I forgot this hasn't got a fine tip on it like the oh, glitter glue. Oh, this is going to be one of them tutorials, guys. Like, really? So, very carefully and gently, let's go down the edge. I'm going to leave that in, it's just, yeah, it's just me. This is what you get when you watch my videos. Plus, I can't be bothered redoing it. So, just a little bit on the edge. I'm like this isn't gonna dry straight away so it probably is gonna try and want to pop back up yep oh maybe fabric tack would have been better for this oh we're okay 
but I am going to move over to the Fabri-Tac because this is pretty much a plastic paper so it's wanting to resist you guys shouldn't have this problem obviously will not have this problem if you're using normal A4 printer paper it's just thanks like, because this has got some sort of a feels like plastic or well, gloss plastic film on it so it don't want to stick just the same as it doesn't want ink to stay on it either that's better fabric tax working well, I say Fabri-Tac, this is actually Beacon's 3-in-1, but I have found absolutely no difference whatsoever between the two. Apart from the name and the fact this is cheaper. Go figure. I think someone said before they're actually made by the same company. Well, yeah, they are Beacon. They're made by the same company. Yes, they are. That is Fabri-Tac, and I've got like a minuscule amount in there. Well, there's quite a bit in there, actually. It just won't come out. Oh, there. Right, that's the envelope. Now glued and formed and sticky. And now all we need to do is put it to one side and wait till we need to use it. I am not decorating them or doing anything with them yet. So I will explain more soon. I'm going to go back and sort them out and then I'll come back at the end and we'll do a bit more. Um, yeah, I actually I don't know what happened there. Um, I started doing some of these already and talking, talking, chattering away to you guys, and then realised I wasn't even recording. Duh. <laughs> Whoopsie. But yes, so <laughs> there. Like I was, I was saying, although you probably don't know because I can't, I have no idea what I was talking about before it decided not to record. Um. But yeah, so this is not a proper tutorial. This is just a way of me showing you what you can do with these gorgeous papers. Um, and I'm just making these up ahead of time, basically. One, because I wanted to know what these gorgeous papers look like printed out on the A3 paper. That really excited me, did that. Um, and two, and I didn't realise until I printed this out that this has actually got Merry Christmas wrote all over it. So I'm guessing that one will get probably get put away for Christmas journal or something. Um, but yes, so these are not necessarily being done to use in journals. I might use some of these for happy mails and that sort of thing. But they just, I just thought they were really pretty and needed to be used instead of sitting in a folder on my computer. 
let's get them used and made up ahead of time and then if I need to send a happy mail or have a journal in mind think oh I know what will be perfect in there and then they're there ready to have so yeah I've lost my train of thought now guys because I don't know what I was I, I'm not sure where I were before it decided to stop recording or I just didn't push record I'm not sure if it was recording and stopped or if I just didn't push record so I'm really sorry but as I said this was a bit of a tutorial but it was only a bit of a bonus tutorial anyway just to show you how to use the envelope punch board more than anything this is my design team project so really no tutorial needed um, as you can see this month for my antique papery design team project I am making envelopes with her beautiful kit well kit sir because this is an accumulation of all sorts of 12 by 12 prints that I was sent way back last year so yeah can you guys believe that I've been doing this for oh, how long a few months anyway um, since June I think it was June or July last year I think June last year was when I announced that Sherry had accepted me onto a design team and then I she sent me the stuff and I immediately got to work in almost straight away but officially the design team caught like the design team um, duration kind of thing didn't start until September last year I'd already been impatient and got in there way ahead of time um, but she was still recruiting so she'd already sent the files across and I'm like well I'm, I'm doing this I mean she never said don't do anything yet she just sent the files and said enjoy yourself I did <laughs> um, but yeah I can't believe I've been doing it for so long so what since well, if we say July, that's July, including July. So July, August, September, October, November, December, January. Seven months. Wow. Awesome. And just like all my other videos, there is a separate playlist for these, for Sherry's, and well, for all the antique papery design team projects. There's a separate playlist for them. Um... I put all my videos into playlists because it just makes them so much easier to find but it also when I'm doing things like this it keeps them all together in one place so if you guys would like to see what I've been doing with the rest of antique papery kits then pop on over to that playlist I'm not going to leave a link in the description because if you wait until the end of the video here in this bottom corner um, there will be a little box that comes up showing you the antique papery design team playlist so just click on that and it takes you straight to the playlist so or just go to the YouTube channel go back to like the home page or the videos page and click on playlist and it'll take to it from there too but yes like I said everything's all together and I can't wait to start using these like I said be it in well I think I said I know I said in the last video I'm not sure if I've mentioned it in this video um, be it in a journal or be it a happy mail or even just sending somebody a card doesn't even need to be a handmade card maybe it's a shop bought card and you just want a nice envelope to put it in well there we go there's loads here and like I said at the beginning of the video I remember saying that um, these have only printed out this big because I have a, a A3 printer if you guys don't have an A3 printer yours will be smaller because you will be using A4 paper or whatever size I think I like that one that way better. Oh, wow. Just wow. And there's so many more of these I could have printed to. And I may even do that at some stage. I just wanted to see how these were going to turn out. 
that one didn't go all to, right way to the end with the score so I'm going to make the rest of that score myself Oh, it's alright doing this, but it doesn't half hurt your fingers after a while. Seems easy, but it's quite labour intensive when you're doing a bundle of them. You know, like that part of my thumb is quite sore. <laughs> Not today, but I do quite often end up with paper cuts doing that. Um, that one hasn't really scored properly. Well, it has, but it doesn't want to fold, so let's just retrain that. That's better. Still didn't work straight, but it doesn't matter. Oh, seriously, seriously loving these. I love the coloured ones, but I really like the neutral ones more. That one also didn't go right to the end, so... so. And we are nearly done. I'm so sorry guys that the other part of the video didn't record. I'm not sure, like I said, how much of it it cut out. So I apologise if this video seems a bit strange. Um, well, most of my videos are strange, let's face it. <laughs> but, yes, you get the gist of it. And without me videoing, you'd never have known what I were doing anyway. You know, because I'm not... It's one of them where don't have to actually film the process of how I make things. I do that because I just like doing it and I know you guys appreciate it. So, And how strange is that that all these papers were cut to the same sizes but yet yeah, look at how different, look at the states of these, look how different they are in sizes. How weird is that? They were all cut exactly the same, 11 by 11 scored the same and everything and yet they've all turned out different sizes strange very very strange but so cool also very cool you can't even really sort them into sizes but yes so like i said also so so cool now these keep wanting to pop up obviously so i'll wait them under some heavy books for a while once I've finished this video, um, I might glue them first, but I'm not sure. I may not. I may wait. I probably will glue them first, actually, because then they're just there ready. But yes, yeah, so let's just have a flip through. Sorry about the noise, guys. Um, but yes, yeah, so let's just have a flip through. So, wow. So we have this beautiful one. Oh, I love how that turned out. Oh, I like that as well. It's kind of framed it. Really, really nice. And then this one, like I said, this is where you decide which way up you want it. This is also why I tried to use as I said, papers that look like collage or could go either way. That one is blatantly obvious, needs to go this way. If I fold it with that flap up there, then that writing would be upside down. So it does need to be that way. But yeah, I'll have to mark that one Christmas. <laughs> and then I know. Oh, but wow. And again, these could go either way up, that way up or that way up. But I like it that way up with this dark bit on top. So, there we go. Wow. I'm loving these. 
such a simple simple project but very very effective to do that needs to be that way up otherwise the map would be upside down but yeah so like i say a very simple project but also a very effective one as well oh just beautiful beautiful what would i like no definitely like that bit on top that was the original sheet of paper I showed you. A little bit hangover, a little bit of hangover there. You see this bit here, so I'll just cut that off at the end. Well, when I come to need to use it. Hmm. I think I like that one that way better. And that one definitely with the rows. Well, yeah, because it goes that way anyway on the back. That one with the rows on top. I love that paint spotter. Gorgeous, gorgeous. I love this one. The thistles. Cool. Yeah, and that one we decided that will go in that writing up instead of upside down. So yes, there we go guys, and this one isn't the one we got, or the one we glued is over there, that's why I'm getting confused now, where was it gone? But yeah, this one is one that turned out square, <laughs> for whatever reasons, but it's so cool. So there we go guys, and then, as I said, the one that we glued, all ready to use awesome but yes so there we are guys um just to show that you don't ho don't always have to put use these digital kits to put in journals you can do anything with them if you print them on the right kind of paper or cardstock or photo paper in my case back to front photo paper in my case um but yeah so just play with them don't just get a kit and immediately assume oh i've got to put it in a journal you don't as i've pretty much proved throughout my design team journey for antique papery i figured that a lot of people are going to be making journals with these kits not just her kits a lot of people's kits so i figured i'm going to go down a slightly different route and um, sherry did say we are free to make whatever we want um i will make journals I have made a journal, a little, little mini one, if you remember. But I also like to do this sort of thing. And then, like I said, last month with the ephemera one. Showing how to use the kits to make ephemera with. Because people forget about that. They get so wrapped up in, oh, I've got this gorgeous digital kit and it's such a theme. Let's make a journal. Well, yeah, but what about the extras to go in that journal? Or just make the extras. We've got beautiful envelopes here now, like I said, that we can use for anything. Happy mail. Nice pen pal letters. That's another thing as well. These, these junk journal groups. There are junk journal pen pal groups out there. There you are, guys. Make yourself a ton of beautiful envelopes to stick your gorgeous letters in. And then, of course, bits of ephemera and stuff like that. Happy mail. Rack, ran, uh, racks. Random back kindness mails. That sort of thing. Or just have a stack of envelopes now we're ready and waiting to go into another journal into a journal when you've made it but yeah so think outside the box guys that's what i'm trying to do with you with these design team projects for sherry because i know she's not bothered if i do a journal or not although i will be doing actually next month i'm not doing a journal I'll tell her why next month i'm doing an altered notebook and i will give you a sneak peek because it's right here um, so let's put these just over to one side and I've just thought of something as well see I've even got it wrote on it then I know antique papery design team project February 2020 the book is already pink it's a bog standard notebook that I got from the shop ages ago and this is um, Sherry's Valentine's kit absolutely beautiful kit just stunning i'm not going to go into great detail with it because you have to watch next month's design team project but this is what i'm going to do with it i am going to 
do an altered notebook. I already have pages laid out and paper clipped as to what I'm going to do with them. So this is going to be a normal page. That's going to be a decor. They're all going to be decorated, don't get me wrong. Or well, some of them might, some of them I might even leave plain. But that's going to be a pocket page. Plain page. Another pocket page. Once they've been glued. A double spread. Oh yeah, plain page, plain page. And then here we have a double pocket spread. Another plain pages, plain spread. Uh -huh. Right, yeah, this one here is a side tuck page. Another side pocket tuck. Plain spread. Right, that's paper clip there, so that's going to be a top loading pocket. Then we have a double pocket here. Um, and I think there's another one actually, one that I said were a plain page, I don't think it were. When I said a plain spread, this one. I said about it being a plain spread, it's not it's paper clip there, so it's going to be a top pocket. Or it's paper clip there, because it's going to be, I think that's what it is. Because it's paper clip there, it's going to be a side pocket. The ones that are paper clipped at the top are going to be the top pockets, that's what it is. But yes, so that is my, or that's going to be my attempt at a Valentine's project for February. So stay tuned for that guys, because I'm going to be working on that soon. I may not do a process video, get back up there. I may not do a process video on it because I'm busy with a ton of other things as well at the moment. Um, but I might. Um, I might do like I have been doing already with different things and just, um, as I'm working on it, flip the camera on but then turn, knock the sound off and put music over it. You guys seem to actually be enjoying that. I didn't didn't think, I mean, I know I'm never going to please everybody. My, trust me, my videos are never going to please everybody. Um, I am well aware of that. I'm also not bothered of that. Um, but I didn't think people would be, I don't know, as enthusiastic, that's it, about those as I ex as they have been. I didn't expect that, I really didn't. But you guys seem to have really been enjoying them as much as I have enjoyed making them. Well, I say making them, I'm here crafting anyway. Um, so I just figured, you know, well, I'm here crafting anyway. I'm not talking or the household's too busy in the background for me to talk. Taylor's sat next to me yapping away or whatever. Um, so, you know, I'm crafting anyway. Let's just flick the camera on and I'll just put music to it. And like I said, I didn't expect the reactions that I've been getting. You guys seem to really be enjoying it. So I will do more of them because it means that I can get more videos up. And, you know, YouTube likes that. YouTube Stats really likes that. Um, but yeah, so... Uh, um, but yeah, so... And I like it as well because I get to interact with you guys more. But yeah, so this is actually video number 16 of January. And we're only on the 23rd. You know, it's like, wow. And that's been possible because I've been I've been knocking sound off videos, speeding them up and making, you know, speeding them up to make them shorter. And you guys have been really enjoying them, so yay, thank you. So, yeah, I think I will be doing a lot more of them. Not, that will not be the whole thing, I'm not going to go into the kind of mode of knocking hundreds of them out, but yeah. I think I'm like I said. I will do a lot more of them, but they're not going to be the main focus of the channel because I do like waffling at you guys. But yeah, so in the meantime, I'm going to love you and leave you because I have waffled on at you enough. And my design team project for antique papery for January 2020 is complete. Thank you for watching, guys. I hope you take inspiration from this. I hope you have a go at it yourselves. And yeah, happy days. 
even if you don't have an envelope punch board guys do them yourself anyway i have shown you before how to make envelopes out of paper the most simplest way and just a quick one if you don't have an envelope punch board just get your piece of paper obviously cut the white edges off find where you want how deep you want it to be fold it up there and fold the flap over there it's not granted as nice as these sort of things but then you have like a rectangle pocket and then just round the edges there or even make them into a v-shape simple as no you don't need all these fancy equipment it's just i had it so i wanted to use it but yes so i will love you and leave you guys and i will see you again very very soon thank you for watching goodbye